has nothing to do with racism at all, in fact. So there you go. Hello, nerds. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just took a drink of my drink and I'm dropping my microphone. That's fun. <laughs> so we have another episode of The Week in Nerddom right here on Generally Nerdy. Uh, not the biggest episode we've ever done, but definitely no slouch in the length department either. So buckle up and prepare. If you want to catch the clips, you want to digest this in smaller portions, then you can see all of that stuff over on the Clips channel. But if you want to sit in with me for the next 40 minutes or so, 30, 40 minutes, then please do so. Definitely don't forget to hit that thumbs up button so you can let the algorithm gods know that I'm actually doing things that are informative and useful to you. All of that being said, thank you for joining me, nerds. Let's talk pop culture nerd news. <laughs> Housekeeping for today's episode is, uh, is uh, once again made possible by energy drinks. Today I'm drinking a Rockstar, not sponsored in any way by Rockstar, but uh, bottoms up, I suppose. So, yeah, stuff and things. Uh, our regular push, you know, social media is a wonderful thing, and it is the metric by which. Most management types take a media source seriously anymore. And in that vein, if I am to get any of the interviews I am trying to get behind the scenes, then we have to do this push and we have to continue to do this push until we meet the minimum metric that most management types are expecting. And that minimum metric is approximately two to three social media outlets with over a thousand subscribers or followers. So we are steadily on that path and your help today could definitely do a bunch to further us on that path. So generally nerdy on every possible social media, pretty much. I mean, the more obscure ones, not so much. I am on Getter. I think that's about as obscure as it gets. Uh, that being said, that is our, our shameless plug for the moment. We do have some shout outs to follow that up. TikTok shout outs. Our newest follower is Travis Skipworth. Welcome nerd to the fold. A special TikTok shout out for one KDog2010. KDog, I see you, little homie. Uh, thank you very much for everything you are doing right now to help push out the generally nerdy word. I appreciate you, man. I just needed to give you a shout out in the video. Uh, moving on, we have Instagram followers to shout out. We have Lord McDuffie is a new follower over on the Instagram. Art the Clown official, the official Art the Clown Instagram post is now following us. Thank you, nerds, for the follow. As well as Janice Warner. Uh, 34 Aunt Janice, thank you for the follow. We are related, but still, you follow me, so I'm shouting you on an episode. Uh, YouTube, we have a new follower there, Christopher Johnson. Uh, I met you the other day in real life, so shout out to you, big guy. And then on Twitter, we have DJ from the Bright Side Home Theater podcast over on the Nerdy Legion Podcast Network, which I am a part of. So if you are not uh, following the podcasts and me over on Nerdy Legion, then go check out nerdylegion.com. That is the shout out section of the housekeeping. And now we're going to start something a little new. Uh, I've kind of been kicking around this idea for a moment for the housekeeping section, and that is we're going to be talking very briefly briefly about this week's upcoming stream. Uh, so I'm going to start theming each stream so that whenever we get anyone in chat joining the stream, or if you find me in the game in which we are streaming, like I do a lot of Splitgate these days because that game is incredibly fun. I play a lot of Halo or Mortal Kombat or uh, Rocket League. We're gonna start doing that with some sort of regularity. A couple other ones, uh, Fortnite and whatnot. Uh, not Fortnite, I'm, I'm probably not gonna do Fortnite. I meant to say Apex Legends. Um, but, uh, so if you find me in game or if you come join the chat, then our theme for this week, and I will hit it one more time on the episode that gets posted up on Wednesday just before we start streaming. But the theme for this week is, uh, is restaurant specific work, work 
place gripes. So if you are a restaurant employee, be it back of house or front of house, then by all means, join us in stream and let's talk about some of the craziest interactions you've had at work, some of the craziest stuff that's gone down, or just something that really bugs you about the industry. Let's talk about that. I've been working in restaurants for over 20 years, so I probably uh, can, can relate to anything you bring to that chat. So again, the Twitch uh, channel is generally nerdy. There are two ends in nerdy. I really don't know why I had to do that, but that is the necessity of the situation. Just know that if you have found the Nerdy Ninja, then you are at the right place. Uh, stream usually starts around 7 to 8 o'clock. It really depends on how fast I can get the Wednesday episode edited. Honestly, that is the biggest obstacle on uh, what time my stream starts. So all of that being said, let's get into today's episode. Starting things out in the music section, we do have a follow-up. This is technically a tour piece of information, but it is about a tour that we have already covered. So System of a Down are currently on tour, a very short tour of which there are five dates left. It is mostly up the West Coast, so they're not really going to a whole lot of places, but they are doing what they can to stay in business. Uh, System of a Down was being supported by none other than Faith No More. And if you remember in our previous episode, Mike Patton is shutting down all Faith No More and Mr. Bungle tours for the rest of the year because he needs some mental a mental health break. Honestly. I mean, sometimes everybody does. So our thoughts are still with you there, Mr. Mike Patton. We do appreciate you, sir, and we hope that you speedily come to a place that is much more healthy in your mental state. That being said, uh, System of a Down has brought in Corn to take the place of Faith No More. Corn uh, minus, obviously, Monkey. Unfortunately, Monkey is still dealing with his Kuvi issue. So again, another speedy recovery in hopes for Corn and their... Uh, uh, surrounding camp. Hopefully this is the last they have to deal with the Kuvi and everybody gets their antibodies up and they don't have to deal with immunity issues anymore beyond this. Uh, that being said, that is all we have for follow-ups in the music section. Uh, we're starting into the new music and new music videos. Uh, we do have a kind of an interesting announcement at the end of this section, so stick around, but... Bring Me the Horizon have announced their first new video for the next post-human EP in their series of post-human EPs, and it's called Die For You. Link down in the description if you're interested to check it out. Uh, this version of B Bring Me the Horizon is uh, self-proclaimedly an emo direction that they're going, though still heavy. Um, this one I couldn't stay away from. Unfortunately, I have listened to it because Sirius XM is a thing, and they just kind of I was intrigued, and this is probably not a band I generally do reaction stuff for, so it is what it is. But uh, I have heard the song, and it is definitely... I So the lead singer, Ollie Sykes, put it in a very interesting uh, vocabulary. He said that this sound they're going for on this version of the post-human EP, they're describing as future emo. So it has to... It's, it's, it's reminiscent of other things that have fed into their inspiration, but through an emo lens and still heavy, and honestly, it's a pretty apt description. Very interesting song. Go check it out for yourself. We're spending a little bit too much time here, so we're gonna move right along. Our next piece has to do with Cradle of Filth. We have another single from their Resistance is Feudal record that is out October 22nd. This one is called Necromantic Fantasies. I have yet to listen to this one as well, so uh, trying, again, I, I just have to do a giant batch of reaction videos because that is, uh, I have a lot of fun doing them and I just ha don't have the time a lot of the time to do them. So one of these times we'll probably take some time off of doing streams uh, to do a batch of those. Anyway, uh, so it again, the record that this comes from is out October 22nd. Moving along, our final piece of new music slash new music video and actually the final piece for this whole section comes from Skillet. The band Skillet has released Surviving the Game. It is the first single off of their newly announced record. Uh, the album is going to be called Dominion. It is due out January 14th of 2022. They just announced that with 
the release of this video. Again, have yet to listen to this one, but it is noteworthy because Skillet is kind of in the middle of some controversy right now. So let's see if it affects their ability to produce music. That being said, that is all we have for the music section. Gaming and tech. Uh, we're doing some follow-ups, and then we have a couple of trailers to talk about, and then we're going to get to have a, an, a, an aside that we need to take for just a brief moment. So first things first, let's start in follow-ups. We have another follow-up on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, there is finally Bluetooth headset support in your Nintendo Switch. Apparently, the hardware support has always been there. They have just unlocked it with a new software update, so if you have have the most recent update to the operating system on your Nintendo Switch, then you now have Bluetooth audio capabilities. So it's about freaking time they've done that. That's all we've got on this piece. We're moving right along. Our next piece comes from Battlefield 2042. This is a very brief one. We just got word that they have been delayed until November 19th. Uh, this is back approximately a month from their October 11th original release or previous release date, I guess I should say. So that is what we have for follow-ups. Let's move now into trailers. We have two trailers to deal with in this episode, and they both have to deal with Dark Souls-like games. At least that is what they're being billed as. The first one is a game called Wu-Chang Fallen Feathers. Uh, this one legitimately looks like a Dark Souls-like game, so uh, the difficulty level is yet to be seen because we haven't played it, but if you want to go check out the trailer, it is down in the description. It is a Chinese Ming Dynasty era, basically version of a Dark Souls game. It looks exactly like that. It looks like it's going to be a boatload of fun to play, but we're moving right along. Next, we're talking about a game that actually launched, uh, I believe it was yesterday as I'm filming this, so two days ago as you're watching this, listening to this, uh, that game being Tales of Iron, not T-A-L-E-S, but T-A-I-L-S, Tales like a mouse has a tail, because your main character is a mouse. This one is very interesting because it is the, the Metroidvania-style gameplay, that 2D side-scroller-style gameplay, but still being billed as a Souls-like experience. Uh, some of the reviews that I have seen so far kind of say, yeah, it's there, but it's not quite to that level of difficulty. So go in with those expectations if you are a Steam player, or I believe it's also on Xbox One uh, if you have the Game Pass. So uh, I will double check that and we'll follow up on that on the next episode, but that is where we're leaving that one. And that is all we have for trailers. And then that brings us to our last piece in gaming and tech, and it is gaming. Technically, there is a piece of news here, uh, but we're going to go off on a little bit of a side tangent ever so briefly. Uh, it has to do with World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft recently got an update. Uh, basically, it boils down to a graphical update, but this graphical update comes with a little bit of controversy. Specifically, two images. One image was completely removed and replaced with something else. That image was a scantily clad woman laying on a couch that was in a painting on a wall, effectively, uh, and that has been replaced with a bowl of fruit, which is a strange choice. Uh, the other image has to do with, again, a painting on the wall that was, again, a scantily clad woman. It's basically the same image, just a higher pixel count, and now that woman is no longer scantily clad, which has the nerd community in a little bit of a tizzy. Now, does this boil down to censorship? I am not one to be pro-censorship at all. I honestly think this change is 100% unnecessary, but does it come down to censorship? Are they stopping you from saying something? Or did they just change the way they were saying something? I think it boils down a little more to the latter and a lot less of the former. So, yeah, again, silly change, absolutely not needed because of the current social climate in which we live. That is why they deemed this necessary. They didn't come out and say it in those words, but that's 100% what it is. But there's no reason to lose your your mind over this. It's it's a it's a it's a graphical change. It doesn't change gameplay. It doesn't it doesn't stop you from doing anything necessarily aside from looking at drawn boobs. 
And if that's why you're playing World of Warcraft, you need to reconsider why you play World of Warcraft. All right, so sensible cap off. We're going to move right along to the next section. All right, so comic books and books is our next section, and we actually have a section here today, so that's awesome. Uh, our first piece comes from a publisher I honestly hadn't heard of before this story, Ablaze Publishing. They're publishing a new book called Animal Castle, which should sound familiar to you literary-minded nerds because it's a play on Animal Farm, which is a George Orwell book, which this is apparently pretty loosely, but still based on the George Orwell original. It, it has similar themes. Uh, we'll be definitely keeping tabs on this just because uh, I'm really interested in a modern interpretation of Orwell, especially considering the social climate in which we live. So uh, it is due out from, again, Ablaze Publishing, December 1st. It is going to be about a dollar cheaper per book than the uh, Big Two, because Big Two usually release at four. $4.99. This is going to be released at $3.99. So there is that. And then our final piece for comic books and books, our only other piece, I guess I should say, has to do with the guy that we cover all the time in this section, Batman. Uh, James Tynion IV is leaving the book. We've already covered this. The man who is going to be taking his place, also I believe we've covered this, is Joshua Williamson, who used to do The Flash, has done a number of other things for DC. Uh, Williamson will be picking up in December with number 118. And he's introducing a new villain, to Batman. That's why this is not a follow-up, because we have an announcement of a new villain for Batman. Uh, the name of the villain is Abyss. It has very phantasm feel based on the artwork, which, if you're watching, should be viewable above my shoulder. I think I said it's that side. Um, so uh, I'm really interested to see where this goes, if, they, if it's going to be an existing character in the Batman canon that they're just repurposing, as they have done a number of times in recent memory. Uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope this is a brand new all original villain. I don't have the highest confidence in Joshua Williamson's writing, so I don't think that's exactly where they're going to go, but th there is that possibility. So that is, that's all we have for that, and that's all we have for comic books and books. So let's move right along, shall we? TV streaming, TV streaming, let's get to TV streaming. All right, so before we get into any of the other stuff, I really, now that the, not the last episode, but the two episodes ago, now that that has finally gone live, now that YouTube has said, oh yeah, oh, that's fine, we won't block you because you're doing a news show. Now that that has happened, <laughs> we can talk about the previous uh, two, uh, two episodes ago. Uh, I said something and I gave an incorrect date in the TV streaming section. So the new uh, Mike Flanagan series, Midnight Mass, did not go live on the 10th. It does, though, go live on the 24th. I honestly don't know where that 10th number came from, but I was saying that for like two or three days before I double checked my numbers and went, oh, I'm stupid, especially because I went to go watch the dang show. I was like, it's not here anywhere. What the heck? So yeah, my apologies. I'm a dummy. Let's move on to other follow-up things. Uh, so we have a follow-up on the Twisted Metal series that I believe uh, Showtime has picked up, though that's not part of the news. The news here is casting. The lead for this show is a character named John Doe. John Doe is going to be played by none other than Anthony Mackie. Other interesting developments that we have seen recently, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick are going to be not only writing along with Michael Jonathan Smith, who writes for Cobra Kai, but the three of them are also going to be executive producing it. In that same vein, we also have Will Arnett involved in this, which is a very interesting thing, but it's not Arnett necessarily directly. It's his production company uh, called Electric Avenue. So Arnett and his producing partner are going to be part of the production staff, but not part of the writing or acting or anything like that. So again, very interesting things coming together. Words are not a thing right now. Uh, but yeah, that's all we have for Twisted Metal. And so our next follow-up has to do with Wednesday, the new Adams Family series that's happening on Netflix, directed by Tim Burton. And uh, <laughs> they've made another casting announcement in this one. And with this, since the last time we talked about this series, we have a couple of other things that uh, are, are developing in the news. Uh, first of which being... 
that the casting announcement is for Gwendolyn Christie. Gwendolyn Christie is going to be playing a character whose name is Larissa Weems. Larissa Weems apparently has a history with Morticia Adams and is also going to be the principal of the academy, uh, the Nevermore Academy, where Wednesday attends school. So we also now know that this is going to be a school-based kind of sort of magic a uh, story where Wednesday has psychic powers. This just feels like it's going in all kinds of new directions that maybe aren't really true to the original Adams family. All right, so uh, something that we need to uh, address is the the new series. We do have a new uh, a log line, is what it's called, for Netflix. Kind of a synopsis a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to read it to you directly. This is direct from Netflix. The series is a sleuthing, supernaturally infused mystery charting Wednesday Adams' years as a student at Nevermore Academy. Wednesday's attempts to master her emerging psychic ability thwart a monstrous killing spree that has terrorized the local town and solve the supernatural mystery that embroiled her parents 25 years ago. All while navigating her new and very tangled relationships at Nevermore. So this sounds like it's kind of uh, Sabrina 2.0 when that is not any of the characters from the Addams Family series ever. That has never been a thing in the Addams. Supernatural, the only supernatural involved with the Addams Family is the grisly and the horror oriented, not telekinesis and magic and things of that nature necessarily, not in the pop culture kind of nerdy way of things, but more in the horror way of things. That is the genesis of the Addams Family. They're almost takes, they're like distant relatives of the horror characters that we got. That's why the Munsters was created in response because these are hearkening back to these characters, whereas the Munsters were these characters, you know what I mean? So. It's just a very strange development along the lines of what we're going to get in this Wednesday Adams series. Now, in a previous episode, there was uh, a concern brought in the comments, to put it mildly, uh, of why I had issue with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Luis Guzman cast as Morticia and Gomez Adams, respectively. Well, uh, first off, I didn't say I really had any sort of issue with Catherine Zeta-Jones as Morticia. I actually think she might do a pretty good job. She wouldn't be my first choice for Morticia, but she's definitely not the worst choice. Uh, but Luis Guzman, I think, is the one that I voiced actual concern over. And I feel like if you pay attention to the vocabulary that I used in that episode, it's pretty clear why I have issue with Luis Guzman as Gomez Adams. Has nothing to do with the fact that Luis Guzman is uh, Hispanic by nature, uh, by the, the, however you want to put that, he's, he's, he is of Latin descent. Has nothing to do with that. I think, honestly, uh, Latin, it kind of makes sense to put somebody of that uh, lineage in that character. The guy's name is Gomez, it just seems to fit. So that is not the issue. The issue is Luis Guzman as an actor, who is a capable actor, just this is such a different kind of role than he's ever played. And honestly, again, to bring him up against the greatest <laughs> Gomez that we've ever seen, uh, you know, not the notwithstanding the original TV show, but Raul Julia as Gomez honestly is what most fans think of as Gomez when reading anything to do with the Adams Family anymore. Uh, it he he has some big big shoes to fill and that was my concern because while yes Luis Guzman is capable of doing serious roles again as evidenced by his work on the Shameless series which I think was spectacular I just don't think he's the guy for Gomez. I very well could be proven wrong once this series happens, though I think this series is going to suffer, now that we have this little bit of extra synopsis from Netflix, is going to suffer from far more than Luis Guzman. And, and honestly, it sounds like Gomez is going to play a pretty minor part in this series. So on, I, I would be surprised if Gomez is my issue once this series airs. Uh, honestly, I think there's going to be a plethora of other things we're going to be focusing on. 
If Luis Guzman does a mediocre job, he'll he'll get past uh, any scrutiny because, again, of the other issues we are anticipating. So. That, that being said, I don't care that Luis Guzman's Hispanic. I think Luis Guzman is hilarious. I think he's actually a very capable actor. I just don't think he's the guy for Gomez. Has nothing to do with racism at all, in fact. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> oh, I hate that I had to address that, but uh, it was brought up and I can't just let sleeping dogs lie, apparently. So that is what we have for follow-ups in TV streaming. Let's get into trailers, and we have some interesting stuff going on in trailers. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but TV streaming is gigantic this episode. Uh, so trailers, our first one is a show called Professionals that's going to be coming to CW. The reason we're talking about this is because it has two nerd icons in this show. It is not necessarily going to be a nerdy show uh, by definition. It seems like a fairly common procedural mixed with a number of other things, but uh, Brendan Fraser and Tom Welling are going to be the leads in this series. It's going to deal with Brendan Fraser is a millionaire uh, company owner who owns a tech company. They have a satellite that gets messed up. It, it, it blows up at launch, I believe was the synopsis. Tom Welling is a contractor who uh, Brendan Fraser brings in to ferret out why it exploded and so on and so forth. Kind of sounds interesting, but not really nerdy in any sort of real respect, aside from Tom Welling and <laughs> Brendan Fraser. So there's that. Our other tra uh, link to the trailer also down in the description. So uh, our other trailer, that our next trailer, I guess, is I Know What You Did Last Summer. This is a series that we talked about when it was originally announced. We now have our first trailer for the Amazon Prime series. Again, link can be found down in the show notes, description, whatever. Uh, the premiere date for this one, which we have, is October 15th. Uh, and then our next trailer, Lock and Key Season 3, has its first trailer. October 22nd is going to be the air date for Lock and Key. Uh, very interested to see where this one goes because it was a bit of a departure from the comic books. So we'll be keeping tabs there. And then our final one is another Season 3. Batwoman has released a trailer for Season 3. Uh, so this seems very interesting as well. This show has the strong potential to have a pretty solid turnaround if they can tackle this season properly. It seems that Season 3s are an interesting situation because Titans Season 3 has taken an opposite turn because Titans was amazing and then Season 3 happened and it was like, oh, this show's not what it once was. <laughs> so, but that is a discussion for another day. Those are all of the trailers that we have for TV streaming. Our first piece of regular old news is a new announcement for a new series over on Disney+. Plus. Flight of the Navigator. Go back, older nerds, older millennial nerds and younger Gen X nerds and think, Flight of the Navigator? Really? Compliance? That one? Yes, that one is getting a series treatment on Disney+. Plus. Uh, there is the noteworthy uh, change for this series in that it is going to be a young female lead instead of a young male lead. Not that that's really a huge deal because at this point it's going to be, I don't know, it's a retelling of the same thing. We already have Flight of the Navigator, so a different version of Flight of the Navigator with a different person leading it really makes no difference, the gender, whoever it is. Um, but uh, also, Bryce Dallas Howard is being brought in as the main series director. So that's pretty noteworthy as well. Uh, our next series announcement actually was made, uh, I just didn't see it apparently for the previous episode. It was made when I could have put it in the previous episode. I just, for whatever reason, didn't see it in any of my sources until I was doing research for today's episode. And that is Grendel over on Netflix. Grendel, not from Beowulf, Wolf, not that Grendel, but this is the Grendel from Dark Horse Comics. This is coming from the Netflix and Dark Horse contract where Netflix has all of the first look options for uh, IPs that come out of Dark Horse that have to do with live action. Uh, this is a comic book that's from Dark Horse. Series creator Matt Wagner is going to be an executive producer on the project. He has made some public statements stating his excitement for the project. All of the other executive producers are regular players over at Netflix or at Dark Horse Entertainment, uh, their, their entertainment wing. I guess is more specific. So yeah, again, 
pretty interesting. Not super familiar with Grendel, though it is one of the longest running creator owned comic books out there. So that's pretty noteworthy. Matt Wagner is the owner of the IP directly because that's how Dark Horse works. That's one of the reasons why Dark Horse was created. That's a whole other video. Uh, but yeah, so pretty interesting there. Definitely be keeping tabs on that. And then our final piece of news, Mobile Suit Gundam is getting a new series. Now, technically we did get a Mobile Suit series in 2019, so that was only two years ago, but it wasn't a proper Gundam series. The last Gundam series, I believe, was over six years ago, ended over six years ago, and only ran for about three seasons. So this new Mobile Suit Gundam is going to be called The Witch from Mercury interesting title. Uh, I honestly am not a super follower of the Mobile Suit animes, but they are pretty awesome when you catch them offhand. You can just watch like an episode or a half an episode just because the artwork is always so interesting and just the way it's done is always so well done. So very excited about this just in, in a peripheral kind of way, but uh, it will be coming sometime in 2022, so they are hard at work at this right now. Uh, and the and that's only the uh, J Japanese release date. Uh, no word on when it's going to be coming stateside, though you can pretty much guarantee it will eventually make its way stateside, if not get a worldwide, worldwide release initially. And that, nerds, is the end of our giant TV streaming section. <laughs> Movies is tiny for today, and uh, I mean, kind of ebbs and flows between movies and TV streaming, and that's just kind of the nature of things, but, and sometimes rumors is just out of hand. We don't cover, anyway, we're bird walking. Movies, our first piece is a trailer, a new movie that kind of flew under the radar somehow from Guillermo del Toro, uh, the famed director of the original Hellboy movie and the sequel to that Hellboy movie, and then a million other awesome horror related things, is bringing us Nightmare Alley. This one is also horror related, though it's kind of hard to tell exactly how it's horror related based on the trailer, but you can find a link to the trailer down in the show notes. Uh, this movie comes out December 17th, so he's been very hard at work at it for a little while at least, because it's coming out in just a few months. Uh, and noteworthy cast is Bradley Cooper, Jim Deaver, uh, Ron Perlman, Kate Blanchett, Tony Colette, so we obviously know it's a horror movie because Tony Colette's in it, uh, and Rooney Mara, amongst other. This is a giant star-studded cast, and the fact that Guillermo del Toro is doing it, just th that alone is reason to catch this in the theaters, and it will be exclusively in theaters for at least the first 45 days when it comes out, again, December 17th. And then... Our final piece of, I told you, movies is tiny. Our final piece of movie news comes from the Star Trek camp, specifically Paramount. Uh, there's been a bit of a shakeup in the executive uh, executive types over at Paramount. And we have uh, one major executive leaving, the CEO leaving, and another one coming in. And the leaving CEO's name was uh, Jim Giannopoulos. Oh, he released a statement that thanking everyone for his wonderful time. He's been there for the last 17 years, so on and so forth. Lots of flowery language. And then kind of planted in the middle of that, a little bit hidden, he mentions Star Trek and how they have multiple projects in the works for Star Trek at Paramount. So most of them, if not all of them, exist only in rumor right now. So which of those rumors exists for our pleasure in actuality? I'm gonna leave that one up to you, nerds. If you have an idea of which one you think is the most plausible, is it the Kelvin continuation? Is it the Quentin Tarantino written but not directed one that has been rumored forever? Is it a new one? We've we've covered a number of rumors that deal with new, non-related Star Trek series or movies or whatever. Which one of those rumors do you think is the most plausible? because that, I, that, that's just way too much fun to speculate. So let's do that in either the comment section, if you're watching on the YouTube, or you can find me on the social medias and we'll have that conversation there. But that is everything for movies. All right, Rumor Mill. Let's do the dirty and get this over with. All right, so first, 
rumor that we are discussing today is one that I feel like I have already shot down preemptively, but we will address it directly, and it is the Marvel Zombies rumored series that has been rumored for a number of years. Now that we have a What If episode, the rumors are sprouting back up, and... All right, so this one actually got a little bit more ground because the last time we talked about a potential What If spinoff series, it was out of the question. They have already said that the What If episodes are not going to be related to the MCU at all. So when you, I, I believe it was a Spider-Man rumor or a Doctor Strange rumor, one of the two, uh, came up and said, oh, they're going to work this into its own. No, they're not. But this has kind of started uh, the first source I found this was a similar style rumor to that. So I was like, oh, obviously this isn't going to happen. But then we got word from Mark Millar, who created the Marvel Zombies universe, that there may or may not be something in the works down the pipeline. So that definitely gave this a bunch more credibility, though that definitely could be Mark Millar trolling us. So I couldn't go 50% on this because they have said in no uncertain terms that the what if episodes will not be related to the MCU proper. They are one-off episodes by design. Because of that very unequivocal, absolute statement, I can't give this 50%, but we're going pretty close. We're going 40% likelihood that we are going to see a, we're gonna, and again, we have to give these rumors a timeline because long enough timeline, anything's possible. So possibility within the next five years, we will see a Marvel Zombies series on Disney Plus is approximately 40% likely. So next, we're talking about Batman, because there's always a Batman rumor somewhere in the mix. Oh, and they just don't go away, and they don't go away, and they don't go away. This one has to do, once again, with Michael Keaton's Batman. This time, instead of it being a movie rumor, there is a series rumor. Series rumor over at HBO Max that they're going to pick up Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, it doesn't say specifically if it's going to be like a Batman Beyond or something. What with Keaton being a little bit older these days, that would make the most sense if this rumor was plausible. I don't believe this rumor is plausible. Uh, from what we, the little we know about Michael Keaton's contract for the Flash movie and the DCEU going forward, there's very little that Michael Keaton is obligated to do for the DCEU, for Warner Brothers specifically. It sounds like he probably has approximately three uh, uh, cameo roles ahead of him. So something along the lines, maybe not a cameo. I think cameo is a little too light of a word. Uh, three minor roles, I guess, is probably more appropriate. So moving forward, we're likely to see him once or twice more in the DCEU proper, but it will be very likely in movies, not in a series, though again, we don't know what that contract holds. These are just the plausible speculations, the most believable speculations that exist out there. So the likelihood that within the next couple years we will be seeing Michael Keaton's Batman in an HBO Max series as the main character. Again, he could very well come on in some sort of cameo, guest spot, whatever, but as the main character, as this rumor is implying, I'm going to say 30%, and I think that's very generous. Uh, moving to our next rumor, this one kind of is building off of a rumor that we, we heard previously, but kind of not. We'll get into that. So, uh, uh, Bloodshot and Bloodsport. Apparently, Will Smith wants in on the success of the most recent um, Suicide Squad movie because apparently it was successful enough for Will Smith to take notice. I just, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, very specifically, Will Smith wants to do a team up movie between he and Idris Elba's character, Bloodsport. So, it would be Deadshot and Bloodsport in a buddy cop effectively movie. Um, I mean, those characters, as far as the cinematic universe is concerned, are kind of interchangeable, so I don't see necessarily Warner Brothers jumping at this, though Idris Elba and Will Smith are both gigantic names in Hollywood, so 
that could be feasible. And we also heard that previous uh, rumors say that uh, they want to keep a spot open on the Secret Six for Will Smith. So again, that's kind of rumor based on rumor, but just that little element of it. I, I, there's just enough on either side that this could really go either way. So we're going to say 50% probable that we will be seeing some sort of team up movie between these two characters. Our next rumor, is inevitable. We have the inevitable Star Wars rumor that Cara Dune is going to be returning to The Mandalorian, even though we don't have any sort of word that Disney has officially hired her back. That being said, we do know that Disney does look slightly more favorable on Gina Carano these days since, you know, the fallout and everybody going, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean you're gonna treat your employees that way? So, uh, the rumor, the lending to its favor, the rumor does say it will not be season three that we see Cara Dune. It will be season four that we see Cara Dune for. Now, we don't know for sure that a season four will happen, so that's kind of rumor based on rumor. Kind of. I mean, we do know that there is a plan for at least five seasons. We, they just haven't confirmed that anything beyond season three will happen because there's other things going on behind the scenes if you want to believe other rumors. So all of that being taken into consideration and the fact that I would really like to see Cara Dune come back, though I still feel like Gina Carano needs a couple more acting lessons. Not saying she's a horrible actress, but she's not the greatest, that's for sure. Um, so that being said, I'm going to put this one right about 60% likelihood that we will be seeing Cara Dune in The Mandalorian Season 4. And then our final rumor is kind of two rumors, and that's only two rumors because I'm choosing to break it up as such, but it has to do with the gaming sphere, and it is based on Xbox. Microsoft is rumored to be in the search for another Bethesda-level acquisition. Uh, depending on which source you're looking at, uh, the most plausible one that I have read, or the most, uh, the, the largest one, I guess, I have read, uh, that is being talked about is their acquisition, potential acquisition of IDOS. IDOS, uh, I think that is the, that's, that's where we're drawing the split. So Microsoft being in the, in the market for another acquisition, pretty likely. Uh, we're putting that part of this rumor at about 70%. Absolutely. As long as Microsoft perceives themselves to be second or potentially third in the uh, video game sphere, they're always going to be looking for that next big move that might get them a little bit more play in the market. So yeah, 70% likelihood that they're on the market trying to ac acquire another big developer. That big developer being IDOS uh, does not seem plausible. We're putting that one at about 25% because there are bigger studios that they stand more to gain from. Yes, IDOS does have a pretty big back catalog, but as far as relevance in today's gaming world, eh, this seems kind of flat, I guess is a good way to say that. Uh, so yeah, we're 70% likely that Microsoft is going to make a big acquisition in the near future. 25% likely that that acquisition will be IDOS. And that is all we have for rumors. That is actually all we have for the episode as well. What did I miss? What should we talk about in the next one? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. Patreon.com slash generallynerdy is the place to get behind the scenes. I'm actually working on some behind the scenes ideas. So if you are not yet a patron, then jump over there and you'll, you'll get to see some outtakes, at least from this episode, uh, as well as more stuff going forward. So that being said, thank you very much, nerds. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, then over to that side of my face, sometime, or that side of my face. Sometime in the near future, there will be buttons that you can touch, uh, touch or tap or click or things and stuff and just hit the button. <laughs> uh, also, don't forget to find me on the social media so we can continue the nerd news conversation, the relevancy and so on and so forth, uh, all of that. And so we can get more content on the channel. The more followers I have, the more viable content becomes. So that being said, thank you very much, nerds. Before we head out of here, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>